So the Glowforge is loud. Like really loud. So today to try to make it a little bit quieter, we're gonna put an external fan on the Glowforge. While we're doing that, we're also gonna give it a good clean. We learned how to do all this from our friend Josh on Instagram at Pacific Northwest Made or PNW.Made. So when we were talking to Josh, he was showing us his whole setup. He uses two glow forges running through the same exhaust and he's got an inline fan baked into that whole situation. He was trying to tell us how quiet his glow forge setup was running and we didn't really understand because we're so used to this thing being a vacuum cleaner running for hours on end sometimes. And when we finally got it through our heads that no, I, it's actually really quiet because I've got this secondary fan running for both of them, we just jumped on them and we're like, how and why? And let's get that right now because this is right in our area. Nicole's computer's here, my computer's right there. We wear big headphones when we're running this to try to not go insane so we were very excited at the chance to get a quiet running machine and we're really hoping that that's the case we got this terra bloom ducted fan these ducted fans are meant for kind of close quarters use so they're supposed to be super quiet and that's exactly what we want for this yeah that's a pretty cool looking unit we'll have to plug it in and kind of see what we're working with i think the main thing we're going to do is to replace stock four inch exhaust hose that comes with it this is our uh, custom built system. This is actually a Rockler part. It's a blast gate for a dust collection system, but it works really well as our main gate towards actually venting outside because we are in the area where things get cold and we don't really want to freeze the Goldforge by having a bunch of air blast back into here. So I'm hoping we should pretty much just be able to put this where that is. Uh, it should work. So one of the things that Josh told us about is this whole honeycomb situation going on back here. You can see that it's pretty gross looking and this has actually been cleaned and we cut it out because that thing was so gummed up with everything that it was lucky air was getting out. We're out of warranty with this machine so it was a pretty quick and easy upgrade actually. If you're in warranty, you know, probably don't, but <laughs> Once you're out, it's kind of a nice thing to do. It's still really gross. We did some wiping down. We could do some more manual cleaning with those acid brushes and then probably just a complete wipe down. But this is actually the fan that we're hoping to bypass. Something that Josh taught us was to use these acid brushes, but to shorten them a little bit to make them a little stiffer. So what we're gonna do is take some scissors and actually cut these down to be more of a stiff brush. So now what we're gonna try to do with this is clean out all of this grody mess. So now that we've actually cleaned out the entire outside by pushing in, we need to go on the inside and vacuum out any of the dirt that might have actually gone within the machine. So it's not perfect, but it's way cleaner. So what we're gonna do next is actually clean out the bed area. The laser tube gets really dirty, as well as the top lid, as well as the front gate. So we're gonna clean up all of those, but to do that, what we're gonna do first is remove the mirror head from the gantry to keep that all safe first, before we start cleaning everything. First of all, we wanna remove the head assembly. Whoops, magnetic, ribbon cable. Pop that out, move the gantry back, and we're gonna take out the crumb tray. All right, that's out. This can seem a little bit intimidating to take out. The important thing to note is that these wheels are fixed. The ones in the back actually are spring-loaded. So you pull this whole unit forwards towards you, and then drop down, and then release. So we're actually loose right now, but we're still on the belt. So you have a stepper motor over here, and then just a loose wheel over here. Um, and the way to get this out of here is actually to put pressure down and roll so that you're rolling it off the belt. A little tricky, but if you get it, there, there we went. So now we're off, and that's as easy as that is. So here's the uh, fan, which we actually cleaned up a little bit beforehand. I mean, we can always do a little bit more, but it's actually not too bad. But this is definitely a important fan to make sure that's clean. Nicole is just gonna wipe down all the surface areas on the inside of the bed here. It's nice just to keep things clean. Make it 
look a little nicer. Something we have to be a little bit more careful with is the actual print head itself. So there's a lot of mirrors on here that you're not supposed to touch and you have to be very careful with. One of them being the actual lens within here. Now, the third fan on the Glowforge that people tend to forget about is the little fan that's right outside of the lens. So what we're gonna do to clean this is actually remove the lens itself because there is a hole within here that if you put a brush through, you'll actually touch the lens and that could scratch it and then you need to get a whole new one. So we're gonna use the handy dandy lens removal tool that came with the Glowforge and take this thing out. So you wanna go the remove side down because this is actually a magnet that connects right to the lens and it pops right out. I used a less stiff brush for this one because it's just, a, it, it felt a little gentler and this one didn't have that much dust, but you go in and just clean it out. And we're gonna take the lens very carefully. We're just gonna clean off the edges really fast. And carefully, while not touching the lens at all, remove the magnet, flip it to the install side. It nests, but it doesn't connect. What we have to do though, is you can see how dirty the lens is. Very carefully, with a very clean section of your cloth, wipe it off. And then we're basically just gonna put this right in here. It will fall into place but you're just basically putting pressure down until it is in place. So it is now installed again and it is good to go. What we're also gonna do while we're here is clean off the side lens and then flip her over and then check that the mirror is good. The mirror is super dirty, so we're gonna clean this off really fast. And then you put this back in just like you found it where the Glowforge piece is pointed outward. This is all magnetized in place. So you're just gonna put this back and it sucks right back in. So that's cleaning the entire head of the Glowforge. So there's one other mirror in here to clean off. Ours has been cleaned recently. It's that guy. So we gotta get this guy back on. The important part is that the teeth face the teeth. <laughs> and again, because these back wheels are the spring-loaded ones. We gotta start there first, so we're gonna hook those on, pull forwards against the springs so that the front wheels have enough room to clear, and then it's all just gonna kinda suck up. You kinda wanna feel where it is, so there's this outer lip here, and I can feel where the lip is on the back. It feels like it's connected, so I'm just gonna pull and up, and now we're on. Easiest to start this with the non-drive wheel, you just put the belt around it. Nothing tricky there, but the tricky part comes in putting it on the stepper motor side. But we're gonna put it on like we took it off. We're not just trying to stretch this out like a rubber band, we actually wanna spin it onto the drive wheel. I just have pressure with my thumb on the back here, and I'm actually gonna move the gantry towards that stepper motor so that it spins it the correct direction to spin it onto the wheel. And there it is. Yeah, make sure you just kept the teeth facing the teeth on the whole way. There isn't any, any loops. As long as that's all in there, that should be ready to go. Now we're just gonna place this back on here. Grab our ribbon cable. Make sure this is on there tightly. If it comes loose, because you didn't push it in tight enough, you're gonna get some fun errors. And then with the magnet, grab it and we're all good to go. Uh, to make it safe to put this crumb tray in and as just a rule of thumb, I always want to do this before you turn the machine on, is to zero it out. So we're just gonna push the head all the way left and this all the way back. And then put this in here, without bumping the head. And that's a very clean Glowforge. So to make our whole Glowforge experience quieter, we got this fan and we're gonna put it right in line to our outside vent hole. It's actually within the size difference from how far we keep our Glowforge to the wall. So this should fit pretty perfectly. My plan is to actually chop this existing vent up a little bit on either side just to give it some flexibility. It'll still be able to move. It's not gonna be a hard connection. As we need it to clean it, we can pull everything out and it won't be really annoying to do that. So first of all, I'm going to remove 
this tube completely from there. I don't really need half of it, but I think I'm just gonna chop it in half for now. We'll see where we go from there. And there's two pieces of dirty hose. So we grabbed some pipe clamp, which will give a really good connection to this guy. So airflow is going outside of the house. These are probably gonna be too long, so I might end up cutting these down and then just moving everything closer. But for testing purposes, I'm just gonna leave the full length and now I'm just gonna hook it all up. I'm just gonna twist this back and leave it fit forward. So that's at full blast. That's better and quieter. So we've got our exhaust fan running at 100% and we're going to try our first cut with the quiet fan. So we're cutting acrylic, which we would smell pretty quickly if it wasn't actually being evacuated and I don't detect anything. Also, I can actually hear the stepper motors now rather than the giant fan, which is kind of interesting. This is a lot more tolerable. <laughs> Yeah, I smell the acrylic now, but I didn't while it was cutting, which is really good. Very good sign that there's enough. Now that we know everything is working really well, and this is pretty much how we're gonna use the machine, I'm gonna go back and cut these down a bit so that we're not this far out. So now that we have the fan installed on the Glowforge, we need to make sure that the existing stock fan doesn't actually turn on because we don't need it to. We replaced it with the other one. So we want to go into uh, kind of more settings in the UI and we're going to tell it that it has the air filter attached because all that's really going to do is not have that fan run because the air filter has its own built-in fan just like we did for this. And that's it. The Glowforge is cleaned and now it's a lot quieter. The fan install was very easy. Our situation kind of made it easy. We have a power plug really close by. Our Glowforge has a straight out exit to the vent and now wired it up. So from right there, we're able to turn on the fan, hit go and cut just like normal, but a lot quieter. Another huge thank you to Josh from Pacific Northwest Made because he made all of this happen by giving us amazing info on how to clean the machine and the idea for the fan, which is now gonna open up tons of possibilities since we're at home a lot of the time and Nicole can run cuts all day long and I'm gonna be okay with that now. Any tools we use is gonna be down in the description, the fan, all of that. If you're interested in a Glowforge and you want a chunk of cash off of that, our referral code is below as well. Thanks for watching, see you next time.